Hey guys, it's Kate. I hope you're having a great day. I'm here with another watercolor and I broke out my Mozart Komarebi palette today to have some fun with that on my Artist Loft <laughs> paper. I've been enjoying playing with this a lot lately for being cellulose because usually I use cotton and it has been really growing on me. So I'm going in with some different colors here. Right now I grabbed the Carmine and I'm working with a very wet brush going straight into my palette and I'm going to be using a lot of colors. This is Hyacinth Violet and I'm not paying any attention where I'm going. I'm going to be doing another experiment today with negative painting. So stay with me while we make a big blob of multicolored paint for the next step. I'm going to bring in some of this pink. Let's bring in maybe even some of this crimson here. Get some brighter reds in the mix. Maybe some of this Gamboge yellow. Oh, that's pretty. And maybe some violet, get some of those darker colors in there. These paints are very pretty right out of the palette. And they're a real pleasure to paint with, very pigmented. I'm going to go easy on that yellow now since I have purple on my paper. When the yellow mixes with it, it can turn a little bit brown because they're complementary colors. So I'm going to start being a little bit careful here. Maybe try some of this blue. Do it in a couple of concentrated places. And I always love my go to Payne's Gray. I'm just going to play around here. And maybe I'll go. I've got the paint palette with the fluorescent colors. Maybe I'll go in with a little bit of this fluorescent pink. And I'm rinsing my brush pretty often because I'm mixing it in with some of these darker colors on the page. So I just don't want it to contaminate. Well, that's a strong word, but I don't want it to mix too much in my palette. Okay. This is what we're going to be making, by the way, but I want to make sure my blob is big enough. I'm going to add a little bit more color to the outsides, and I'm scrubbing it in a little bit up here because my paper has just started to go a little bit dry. And I don't want too much cauliflowering, although there might be a little bit because I'm going back into paper that is just slightly damp. Down here is not such a big deal. Maybe I'll go back into some of that yellow down here. A little bit more, and we should be able to do it. I like this crimson, it's a pretty color. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and we're dry. So I am going to take my butterfly stencil and put it where I think it'll work the best, which I really like how that looks right there. So I'm actually going to grab a couple little pieces of washi tape to help me hold my stencil in place. And I think I'm right about at the end of this roll. <laughs> but this should work just fine. Okay. Now I'm going to take my fine liner and just lightly trace around the inside of all of these shapes for the butterfly. And this is going to be my template for the negative painting. And I'm going gently because I don't want the stencil to move a lot and I'm kind of holding it close to where I'm drawing so that it stays pretty stable. Because that's what's going to give me a good end result. So I'm just going to go through and trace everything out. You can do this with any stencil you have. I think the only thing you'd want to just make sure of is that your inside lines, because you're going to be painting there with a darker color or a different color, and you want to make sure it's something that you'll actually be able to put your brush in. Or if you're going to paint with, let's say, a marker or even a fine liner and draw instead of paint, that might work for some of those really fine, more detailed stencils that you might have. But I chose this one because the lines are a little bit wider, so they'll be much easier to stay inside with my paintbrush. And also, you don't have to be, you know, overly careful about staying inside the lines either if something more sketchy is what you're going for. It's a little bit more awkward on this side for me, but just go slow and let your pen kind of follow along just the inside of the stencil. For me, it helps pulling this way rather than pushing. So anywhere I can, I'm going to do that. All right, I think I've got everything. So let me just take this up carefully. All right, so we've got our imprint on here now. So before I paint, I want to do a little bit of stenciling. So I'm going to grab my blender tools and add a little bit more interest to this. I think I'm going to go with the purple. And I'm just going to kind of go easy with this color. It's a pretty rich color. And so I'm going to start here at the outside. And add it kind of around my watercolor a little bit. and work my way in. Now I'm not going to care too much about this blank area in here because most of that is going to be painted over. But I'm just going to add a little bit more of a pattern. And 
And for this one, I kind of like using the edge of the stencil as a bit of a frame. That's okay for me. I like that. All right. And I'm going to do just a little bit with this stencil. Nice. Okay. Now it's time to go back in with paint. So I'm going to choose a nice dark color. And I've got a couple different brushes too. I've got this kind of flat brush, which may help with some of these lines. I've also got a fine liner brush. And um, let me see, this is a number eight round and it's got a pretty nice little tip on it. So we'll go from there. And I also have my big quill brush for some of this outside area. So I think for this one, I'm going to go with a very dark Payne's Gray. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. Okay. And wet my palette a bit. I'm going to start with this brush and see how it feels. And since I tend to rest my hand, I'm going to start on this left side. And this could be a two-coater. We'll see. <laughs> okay. And we'll just follow along these lines. All right, I've got my Between the Lines painted, and I am going to let this dry completely and finish the negative painting. I'm going to bring that dark color outward a little bit, but I'm going to let this layer dry first. I'll be right back. Okay, what I'm going to do next is dip my quill brush into some water, get it wet, and I'm going to wet the paper down here and paint lifts pretty easily from this but that's okay and I'm gonna let this just kind of flow out I'm gonna tilt this up a bit some water here take up that excess and I'm blotting my brush to get those drips so it has a nice gradient just like that and I'm going to do the same thing to the top one side at a time. Get 
get some of that Payne's Gray and just dunk it right in here. And I'm going to start tilting this backward. And then I'm going to lead it down with my brush. Just like that. Add a little bit more Payne's Gray. And just kind of help it along. Like that. And I'm blotting my brush, getting up the excess moisture. And then once more here in the middle. And get some of those shadows in there. Now paint lifts kind of easily on artist loft paper and some cotton papers. My B paper paint lifts somewhat easily and it's really good if you're going to do scrubbing. For this it is lifting a bit but I'm actually okay with that texture. I kind of like that and I'm going to be adding some more to this. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back shortly. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to add some really nice doodles to this. So I broke out the jelly roll first and I'm going to add some detail to this dark area. So first I'm going to concentrate on these big black areas or filled with Payne's Gray, I guess I should say. I don't know if my pen, I sometimes love and sometimes hate these pens. <laughs> Let me try. I've got the Signo Uniball. Let's try this and see if it's any better. Not too much. But we'll go with it. I like that. Okay, I'm going to turn this upside down for a minute so I can go this way. And I'm going to try to get an even number of the dots. Nice. All right. So let's do...
Well, that's not too bad. Okay, whoops, <laughs> trying to put the wrong lid on the wrong pen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab my black fine liner and just add a few more details in black to the inside. I love how doodles with the highlights, especially with the white, they really work well over watercolor. And it just turns something into something that just pops, if that makes sense. And you can make tiny details, big ones. I'm using a pretty fine, fine liner. <laughs> <laughs> this one is the point one tip so it's pretty little and I might add just a couple little circles to the inside here Maybe one to each of these. Excellent. I think last but not least, I've got this gold Posca pen and I think I'm going to do some bigger gold dots outside. Maybe a few little highlights there and here. What do you think? <laughs> I love this, how it turned out. I'm going to give you a close-up. It's pretty windy outside. This might be coming through on the speaker, but sorry about that. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to try to get some of that 
sparkle from the Posca pen. I love this. I hope you enjoy doing this with me today and practicing some negative painting. There's so many different ways you can do it and it's really a fun exercise and it actually really helps with brush control too. So hopefully if you especially if you're new at watercolor, I hope you give that a try and thank you so much for watching and until next time, keep creating. Bye.